Denisovans were one of the most successful human species to ever live. For over 300,000 years, they dominated Asia in a region characterized by freezing temperatures and high mountains. Incredibly, they are known to have lived at elevations of over 13,000 feet or 4,000 meters, even during the coldest of ice ages. The high mountains of Asia are really unknown because investigators usually just assumed nobody lived there. However, new discoveries have piqued other researchers' curiosity about what else may be hiding at high elevations. In fact, the past climate was even colder than today, so it is even more surprising there were any humans living at such high elevations of western China and Tibet. While Neanderthals preferred the warmer temperate forests and grasslands of the southwest, Denisovans were much better adapted to colder environments, such as boreal forests and tundra regions in northeastern Eurasia, including the high plateaus of western China and Tibet. Meanwhile, according to a new study, Denisovans and Neanderthals would have had a high probability of contact in the Siberian Altai Mountains during relatively warm periods. Southern Siberia is one of the regions predicted for Neanderthal-Denisovan niche overlap. For example, the 90,000-year-old hominin named Denny, who was identified as the daughter of a Denisovan father and a Neanderthal mother, demonstrates the possibility that interbreeding was common among early human populations. These hominins lived in Denisova Cave about 1,500 miles north of the only other confirmed Denisovan fossil discovery. What researchers didn't realize was that a Tibetan monk had discovered a piece of a jawbone in a cave on the Tibetan plateau in the heart of the Himalayas. He gave it to the sixth living Buddha, a holy man there, who then passed it on to scientists. Scientists began studying the bone nine years ago. The bone, half of the lower jaw or mandible, was discovered in a massive cave nearly 11,000 feet up on the plateau. The Buddhist monk discovered the right half of a fossilized hominin jawbone in Baishia Caste Cave on the Tibetan plateau in western China. An analysis of ancient proteins extracted from the fossil, dubbed the Siahe mandible, reveals that it belonged to a member of the mysterious Denisovans, and it is the only Denisovan specimen discovered outside of Denisova Cave. It should be noted that a different lineage of Denisovans lived in Southeast Asia and Australia New Guinea, but this group diverged from the Siberian Denisovans in the same way that Homo sapiens did from Neanderthals. As a result, the northern and southern Denisovans most likely had distinct morphology and physical characteristics. Chinese scientists prefer to use the scientific name Homo longi to refer to Denisovans, but the name is still up for debate. Denisovans are an extinct sister group of Neanderthals known only from fragmentary fossils recovered from Siberia's Altai Mountains. Their genomic legacy can be found in several Asian, Australian, and Melanesian populations, implying that they were once widely distributed. The Siahe mandible is direct evidence of Denisovans outside the Altai Mountains. The analysis reveals that the Siahe mandible belonged to a hominin population closely related to the Denisovans of Denisova Cave. While there were no traces of DNA preserved in this fossil, scientists were able to extract ancient proteins from one of the molars. The ancient proteins in the mandible are severely degraded but easily distinguished from modern proteins that could contaminate a sample. A heavy carbonate crust was attached to the mandible, and using U-series dating, the research team determined that the mandible is at least 160,000 years old. This minimum age compares the Siehe mandible to the oldest Denisovan fossil known from Denisova Cave. The Siahe mandible is the earliest hominin fossil on the Tibetan plateau. It predates the region's oldest known Paleolithic sites by at least 120,000 years. The Siahe mandible shows that Denisovans lived on the Tibetan plateau and successfully adapted to high-altitude hypoxic environments long before modern Homo sapiens arrived in the region. While there are many unknowns, Scientists are excited to see what other clues the jaw may hold for understanding human evolution throughout Asia. In fact, the fossil could be used to identify other Denisovans from Asia's growing pool of hominin fossils that do not neatly fit into the known branches of our family tree. For example, a three-rooted molar in the jaw is similar to a tooth in a mandible from Taiwan known as Pengu-1, implying that it too could be Denisovan.
Northern Denisovans did, however, live 1,200 kilometers, 800 miles to the southwest, high on the Tibetan plateau. Ice Age children squished their hands and feet into sticky mud on the Tibetan plateau, thousands of feet above sea level, around 200,000 years ago. These impressions, which are now preserved in limestone, provide some of the earliest evidence of human ancestors in the area, and maybe the oldest of their kind ever discovered. Scientists discovered the five handprints and footprints during an expedition to a fossil hot spring in Kesang, which is more than 13,100 feet, 4,000 meters, above sea level on the Tibetan plateau. They dated the sample by determining the amount of uranium, a radioactive element found naturally in the environment, present in the prints. Based on the rate at which uranium decays, they estimated that the impressions were left between 169,000 and 226,000 years ago. Based on the size of the prints, researchers determined that the marks were left by two children, one about the size of a modern-day seven-year-old and the other the size of a twelve-year-old. However, that they cannot determine which species of archaic humans left the prints. The prints provide the earliest evidence of hominins in Tibet, but there is growing evidence that archaic humans lived on the plateau at the same time. As stated, the Siahe mandible is at least 160,000 years old, implying that the bone remnants could be from the same time period as the handprints. However, the Baishia cave is located many hundreds of miles north of the footprints and is only 10,500 feet, 3,200 meters, above sea level, making the newly discovered handprints the oldest evidence of occupation in the plateau's highest elevation region. Nevertheless, the handprints were most likely left by Denisovans, so the study could thus indicate that Denisovans were the first Tibetans and that they initially adapted genetically to cope with the high elevation stress. The handprints are composed of travertine, a type of freshwater limestone formed by mineral deposits from natural springs. Travertine, when first deposited, forms a very fine sludgy mud, into which one can easily push their hands and feet. When cut off from water, travertine hardens into stone. On a previous expedition, investigators discovered similar hand and footprints, and many traces of early humans can be found on the nearby slopes. The previously discovered hand and foot impressions vary in size, implying that they were left by children and adults, but they appear to have formed organically as people travelled across the land. The newfound prints, on the other hand, appear to have been left intentionally. They're purposefully placed. You wouldn't see these traces if you were doing normal activities across the slope. They're actually placed within the space, as if someone was, you know, creating a more intentional composition. They resemble finger flutings, a type of prehistoric art created by running one's fingers over soft surfaces on cave walls. Neanderthals created this type of fluting in a cave in Belgium around 100,000 years ago. Meanwhile, the gene that allows modern humans to survive at high altitudes was inherited from this extinct human species, according to a study, Nature. The EPAS1 gene variant, which affects blood oxygen, is common among Tibetans, many of whom live at altitudes of 4,000 meters year-round. However, the DNA sequence matches that of the extinct Denisovans. Researchers have linked the Denisovans to an unusual variant of the EPAS1 gene, which regulates the body's production of hemoglobin, the molecule that transports oxygen in the blood. When the body is exposed to the low oxygen levels found at high elevations, EPAS1 signals other genes in the body to activate triggering a response that includes the production of more red blood cells. The unusual variant found among Tibetans most likely evolved through natural selection after their ancestors moved to Asia's high-altitude plateau several thousand years ago. If you go to high altitudes, you will immediately experience a variety of negative physiological effects. We'll be out of breath, and we might get altitude sickness. After a while, you'll try to compensate by making more red blood cells. However, because we are not adapted to the high-altitude environment, our response would be maladaptive. We would produce an excess of red blood cells. The blood thickens and raises our blood pressure, putting us at risk of stroke, particularly in pregnant women. However, Tibetans are protected from these risks by producing fewer red blood cells at high altitude. This prevents their blood from thickening. 
but the researchers were unable to explain why it differed so significantly from the DNA sequences found in all other humans today, so they turned to more ancient genome sequences for answers. Researchers compared it to Neanderthals but were unable to find a match. Then they compared it to Denisovans, and we were surprised to find an almost exact match. The interbreeding event with Denisovans most likely occurred a long time ago. After Denisovan DNA entered modern humans, it persisted at low frequencies in various Asian populations for a long time. Then, when Tibetan ancestors moved to high altitudes, this genetic variant was favoured, and it spread to the point where most Tibetans carry it today. But it is unclear whether Denisovans were also adapted to high-altitude life. Denisova Cave has an elevation of 2,500 feet or 760 meters, which is not particularly high, but it is close to the Altai Mountains, which rise above 3,000 meters or 10,000 feet. Thus it was a clear and direct example of humans adapting to new environments using genes acquired through interbreeding with other human species. A study of Eurasian populations found that Neanderthal DNA is overrepresented in regions of the genome involved in the production of skin, hair and nails, implying that something advantageous allowed Homo sapiens to adapt to conditions in Eurasia. One theory is that the reason why East Asians have high amounts of Neanderthal DNA, but very little Denisovan DNA, is because the Neanderthals replaced the Denisovans during the last full interglacial around 100,000 years ago in temperate regions of East Asia, while the northern Denisovans only remained in small populations at very high elevations. And with that tantalizing statement, we leave you to ponder the mysteries of our shared human history. Until next time, stay curious and stay questioning. Also, please subscribe, share and explore our channel's other highly compelling videos. Thank you and take care. Thank you.